Welcome back everyone to Pintopia. And today I am adding these fences at the top floor, the fourth floor of the observation tower, because I think that would make a nice decorative top and not block my way out. And that's of course have it decorated and also not blocked at the same time. I haven't decided what to do with this level though. Hmm, should I use walls or should I use fences there also? I'm going to decide on that one later. Here though, it's definitely walls. This is the bedroom and I think it would be best for it to work that way. So I'm going to work at it like that. it's being there and of course I will be putting in windows all through the out the place as soon as I get the rest on this done first let's see how this looks Ooh, exactly the number I needed all right now let's head down and have a look and see if it works Hmm. Well, it's a bit hard to tell there. Can't see those fences much at all. Well, hmm. You don't see it all that well. Then I have another possibility of what I could put on there. If it's not seeing very, very well, then I might work on using bookshelves or something like that up there and make that into enchanting room, but I'm afraid that that'll just make the whole thing look ugly up there. So I'm reluctant to do that at the moment. I'll leave it as is for now. That seems to be all right. I will need some shutters there in order to add a little variation onto that level. And I could do the same thing down there. Maybe for the third floor also. Let's see how it looks on the first three floors when I do it. Ah, that looks much better. Now all I have to do is add a door on each side. And we will be set. Grab this while we're at it. There you go. Now, hmm, well, there is the bit about a little off balance with the door, unfortunately. Uh, how does one handle that situation? I have to think on it. Oh, I know what I can do. I could put a. How about if I put a fence over here? No, not, not, not a torch, a fence. And under the fence, well, no, we don't want to put a lantern right in front of the door. <laughs> uh, that's, that's not going to work at all. No. I think that's better. Good. Now I'll just need glass. And the glass. There. All the way around in all of our windows. We'll have to do the upstairs ones also. We'll take a quick look at the windows that are down here before we do that. One more side to be done. Yep. And good. Ah, no. Ah. Real painful to do that before you get silk touch. 
All right, yeah, that'll be nice. Yep, just add some ladders. I mean, stairs to go here. All right, good. So that side. And that side. There you go. Entrance for both sides. Now, let's see if this looks nice. Yeah, I think that'll work. Well, I'll get the glass into the other levels, but I think that's a nice start there. I think when I create my true nether hub, I'm going to need to get some warped fungus around here to keep away the hoglins. And I'm also going to be needing some soul torches because the soul torches can help to keep away the piglins when I don't need to worry about them. Let's see. Hmm. Well, that hoglin it <laughs> Oh well, he didn't like that battle. Apparently they can detect when you, when they can't get to you. Apparently, so that they makes this mock charge and then he changes his mind. It's kind of a bit of a makes things a little bit tough there. Hmm. They just can't make up their minds whether they want to. <laughs> <laughs> whether they want to attack you or not. Oh well. I'm going to need more arrows and a much better bow before I hunt them regularly. What I want to do though is to find some more nether biomes. Because right now I might have wandered into the traditional biome by accident without noticing. So far, I've been spending most of my time here in the Crimson Forest here, and I have occasional patches. I mean, this is the smallest patch of warped forest I've ever seen. And I think all my patches seem to be that way in here, but there must be another biome somewhere instead of an area that's completely dominated by this Crimson Forest. The Hoglins decided, since they can't beat me one-on-one, -on -one, that they'll wait till I was trying to build a platform across the cliff, and then they'll sneak up behind me and butt me off. Hoglins are nasty. But, of course, that now means that I don't have anything left. Ooh, no levels, no equipment, well, I do have what I stowed in here, but I don't have any gold left, so I'm going to have to go and do some mining. Oh, joy. I think before I do any more deep exploration of the nether, I'm going to have to set up a nice nether base. But before I set up a nice nether base, I'm going to need to replace what I lost in that little encounter in the nether, which was a great deal. And part of my step in doing that, of course, would be getting stuff down here, which is in the mining area. But every time I come down to the mining area, I've been getting lost. And my usual remedy for getting lost is to just make a path in here. So I did go about making a path and creating these little lights areas here. Took a great deal of getting lost and all of that before I finally got a good path on and what I need to do is replace that. Now of course I am going to grab this iron because I am down to 
one piece of iron ore after that incident plus another one where I was stumbling lost in this area. I said, well, nothing interesting is going to happen when I go around stumbling getting lost, but except that I get killed completely and lose what little I had left. So I guess I don't need a shovel down here. There you go. Good thing I didn't have diamonds on me when I got <laughs> last time I got killed, but all right, there you go. But iron is going to be something I'm going to use. That and gold, of course. I'm not going back to the nether without gold. I have enough trouble surviving in the nether when I do have gold. The idea here then is to create a path here using diorite that's going to lead from here down to the heart of where I'm exploring in here. Actually, it goes eventually to a skelly spawner. So this is going to go from here to the skelly spawner, and then I could branch out to other areas as, and perhaps maybe mine a little bit more diorite so I could have more materials for the road. Before I actually build this road, I better make sure that I've got this path right. I had a little trouble almost losing this when I was getting this example. I might find another, a better way in order to wrap this around here since this comes up in a circle currently. Comes up like this. Now this is getting out of diamond level, unfortunately, but it does get to a skelly spawner, and that may be a key in order to try to recover from what I got here so I can at least get some XP. Is this the way to the spawner then, I think? All right, it's less of a distance than I think once I do this without getting lost. Yeah, all right, here's the spawner. So I figured this could be a nice little area here in order to get X XP. Maybe some, because I need some arrows. I need XP, I need arrows, and probably a decent bow wouldn't hurt. Probably take some of this also at some point. And this spawner here would be the key to it. And I just want to make sure I have a nice path here so I don't get lost when looking for it. Because last time I tried looking for it, it was off camera, but I tried looking for it. I got completely lost and stumbled into an area that was, well, let us just say, fatal for my collection. And of course, I was still getting lost, so I couldn't find stuff afterwards. It's possible that the most expedient route isn't to go all the way through there, but to go up this way. So I want to check this out to see if this is a more expedient route. Make sure I stay reasonably straight so that I don't get lost, because that's the one thing I don't want to do. Aha! Something's opened up here. Is it a shortcut or is it a fool's errand? Hmm. Oh, that still goes up that way. Yes, it looks like that this works. We have it here. And then go up here. And then we can go up there. And that leads along the rest of the way. So now I just need to fill in all of this diorite to lead the way so I don't get lost about two or three times whenever I try it. I was just finishing up my diorite path so I could have it all the way from the stairs to where I was going and look what I unearthed. Just as I was desperately low in gold, I, f good grief, this is one of the largest veins of gold I had. And unfortunately, I keep on trying to pull out a telekinesis spell because I've been playing Mage Rage. 
all right, 10 pieces of gold. That means I should be able to recover a bit then, because that's a bit of a concern that I've lost quite a bit there. And gold is one of the things, because I needed a clock, because I have an, it's annoying that when I'm underground, I can't tell what time it is. And so I'd like to have a clock in order to do that. All right, there you go. That you just go one or two in there, and actually, I wanted die right there. All right, fine. Anyway, yes, I know. I, yes, have an enchanted stone pick. That's a just as testing out a enchanting table. Now I will probably add it. Do I have any? I have to make some diorite stairs in there to make this a little bit more convenient, but I need to make it prettier and the like. But we do have our path going all the way from here. Maybe just a couple of corners, something, something like that, to make it a little bit more convenient. But I think it's a reasonable route in order to get from there in order to our skeleton spawner. And I have done a little work here as you get here this is where my XP has come from from this little thing <laughs> sharpness oh it's an iron sword yeah all right that's right I got I was using a stone sword against these earlier when I was testing out. So I thought, all right, now let's try an iron sword and see what we have. So, so I have managed to collect 55 bones, 43 arrows. Arrows are a really nice thing to have. And some bows. So I don't have an enchanted bow. I suppose I could enchant a bow just to see how that works in there. But at least repair this as much as I can. Good. So now I have that, and I've got some arrows. I'll well take the bones also as, as an edit, and get a little XP there so that I can do some enchanting. Well, right now I don't have any books. I am going to have to go between episodes. I am going to have to head out, see if I can get some leather so I can get some books. And be able to do some decent enchanting because right now I do not think that a bookless enchantment is going to help me all that much. I suppose I'll need to return to the nether, so let's finish off in there and make my plans for making it a more controlled area. Be careful of those guys, of course, because I want to create a nether base here. <laughs> See, if you're looking out after them, they seem <laughs> they seem to back off. What I'm going to do is I am going to build a wall here, sort of set out a set of territory so that I could get ready to build a safe area in here. My nether hub is going to be. Say 17 by 17, I think, will be my area there. So this is our one, two, three. So we had the middle there, so we go out one, two, three blocks right now. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, let's see. This is zero, zero. So if that's zero, then the wall I want then is going to be at. I said 16, so be. Nine, let's see, 17, yeah, 9 be at 8 from there, right, it'll be at 8. Right, so that's going to be, one wall is going to be there. And then the other wall here, we're going to have to take this out here and using the stone pickaxe so that I don't... I'm going to need to get bending on my diamond pickaxe. I'm going to arrange that. I don't know yet. I'll probably have to get a friendly 
librarian here who's willing to sell me such a thing. The idea here then is to head out to negative eight here. And I want to be able to use this as a foundation, you know, nether hub. It's the usual thing that you see people do. A nice comfy place in the nether, if comfy is the right word for when you're talking about the nether. And to block out the mobs, that means I'll need a floor that is made from something that's not going to spawn anything in there. So keep out the piglins and the hoglins. And I'll probably have to put some soul torches and some warped mushrooms in order to keep them out totally. Now I am going to change these materials eventually, but the idea here is to start out with cobble since I've got plenty of it just to make the place safe and then from there oh I was wondering why was this taking up more than what because I am putting well that didn't last long put out my territory stake it out and <laughs> wait it says I look like I might do some or is that the baby one Yeah, they, they take a couple of pot shots at you and run back. Hmm. Maybe I don't know how to tell the baby ones from the adult ones yet. Well, that's going to be disconcerting. Ah, that could explain a great deal. But now you know what I'm planning to do with the nether here. Make my little base here. Well, I'm going to have trouble with this side of it. And, of course, this side, I am going to have to risk a pig. I don't think piglins like nether portals. Which means I'm less likely to be attacked by one here. Now, this is the hub, but then, of course, from here we're going to head out for a tunnel because we are going to have a tunnel going this way. We're going to have a tunnel going there and a tunnel going here eventually. And all right. I know I'm, I'm a bit shy of piglins now after a time when knocked me over a cliff. Uh, of course, I meant hoglins when I said that one knocked me off of a cliff. Now, I've got my nether hub area here. Ceiling's a little bit too low. I'll expand that as things go on. And this tunnel is still in existence. That's just to block off anything from coming in for the moment. I've marked the other two tunnels with another one to show where they are. There will be another tunnel here, but right now there's a pretty long drop if you go through here, so it'll be a while before I have that on. I decided am I going to use doors or something else in order to mark these tunnels. I have to decide as I go along. But now that I don't think any piglins, this time I really do mean piglins, are about to come along to go after me. That Let's get some of those nuggets in there. Unfortunately, my pickaxe broke because of all the stuff I was in clearing out this space. One pickaxe later. There you go. Don't want to make sure I get all of my gold that I can get there. Good. And I waited on doing that until after I had the whole place enclosed because piglins do not like it if you go around digging up golds. So if they can't get to me, then they're not going to be bothered, right? But now the question is, do I head out first and start exploration or do I start building up this area? I have to decide on that when I return for the next episode of Piney Plays Minecraft Pinetopia.